Hey guys, it's Fire here, and uh, today I'm going to be doing another live commentary. So I'm going to be playing Syndra. Let me just turn this down a little bit. I'm going to be playing Syndra. Uh, this is on my Smurf as well, which is mid plat level, and hopefully I'm going to be showing you kind of how you can control your lane and then snowball that into other lanes. So I'm going to pick up a Doran's Ring, two pots, and I'm going to pick up a Ward as well. So let's just talk about the matchup really quickly. I'm against a new champion. Oh, Yasu, maybe? I don't know how you pronounce that shit, but uh, Yasu, so Yasu's actually pretty good against Syndra because if he is competent with him, then he can use his wall and he can actually negate my whole ultimate. So if I fire my ult at him, he can actually put his shield up and uh, that will, like, my none of my balls will hit him and that will completely ruin my damage and kill potential, which is why I am running barrier this time. So I'm not that afraid of Yasu in general because... Even though Syndra is pretty immobile, um, I don't think he can... Wow, okay, she was AFK. Okay. <laughs> Oops. Um, even though Syndra is pretty immobile, I don't think he has a lot of kill potential on me. But if I miss my ultimate and he manages to actually get it onto me, then uh, and then he goes onto me after my ult misses, then I'm pretty screwed. So that's why I went uh, barrier. So... Uh, I'm just going to um, calm my team down because I want... Keep the spirit high, team morale high is always really important. And the other thing to bear in mind as well, that way that you kind of want to play Syndra is just to spam your Q as much as possible. So every time Yasu goes for a creep because he's melee, I'm going to be aiming my Q at that creep that he's going to CS. This is pretty much the easiest way that I'm going to harass him out of lane and pretty much kill him. Because if he wants any CS, I'm going to make him pay for it. I can watch my minion's health, and as soon as he comes close to it, like he has to stand there, or at least near it with his Q. So it pretty much just <clears throat> is a really easy way of hitting him. See, I've already hit him once because I knew he was going to come for the creep. When I've got my ball up again, I'll hit him if he comes for these ones. I'm going to try not to auto-attack too much because I don't really want this to push to his turret. The thing is, if I completely control the lane, I don't even get anywhere near then the problem will be that a moon will just camp me. Like I'll, I will eventually push because he's not attacking anything. And when he does that, a moon, I'm a really easy gank anyway because I'm Syndra, and I'll end up blowing my flash. So he's hit level two already. He has this really annoying shield, which means that I'm actually not poking him as much until I really start going aggressive. And I'm gonna start going aggressive now that he's pushing in because there you go. That's his shield gone. And now it's pushing towards me. I don't have to be afraid about auto-attacking him or trading with him because the lane is already pushing to me. So he's using that pretty well, actually, to dodge my cues, which is something I hadn't thought about. So I'm going to have to be a little bit careful now. He's actually probably going to be able to do that all the time to me and dodge the harass and push the wave. So I'm going to have to spend my cues actually on uh, the minion wave instead of him, which is going to be pretty annoying. But I can... Something I'm going to have to live with for now until I've actually got a lot of kill potential on him. So he's got his uh, whirlwind thingy up at the moment because obviously he's uh, spinning or he's <clears throat> got the the wind around him which means he's got his whirlwind ready. Uh, someone's coming in for a gank now. I'm going to try and if he slows him he should be dead because I'm waiting for him to flash. Okay, I didn't put my ball down. That was my fault. I should have probably got the stun on him. I was taking a lot of minion damage at the same time, which is why I didn't want to go too aggressive. And he's now warded that. So he's warded there. There's 450 ward. The wards only last 60 seconds at the start of the game. So it's always a good idea to time them and let your team know. Because now the guy, my jungler, knows that if he does come again, he only has to wait until 450. And then he's got no ward. And you have no ward for another two minutes after that. So I'm going to be a little bit careful because he can... Probably kill. I'm going to let this go actually because I don't want to take too much damage. I'm just going to queue these to try and pick them up. I'm having to use a lot of uh, my mana at the moment to keep the wave in the middle because I don't want it under my turret. Cinder is really bad at CSing under turret and I really don't want it to get to my turret. So if I don't want it to get to my turret, I have to spend my mana on the wave. Which is why you see is actually a reasonably good pick against me. Something I'm not wasn't expecting. At level 6, I'm going to be able to kill him, and even though he is a good laner, like, Yasu is a good laner. He's got a lot of utility, he's resourceful, so it means that he can literally just spam his abilities out, and he doesn't have to consider mana costs. Like, I'm having to use my mana to push, he just pushes, and it doesn't even matter. So, resourceless, like, champions are really good at pushing, and really good in lane, but they tend to not be as good 
outside of lane. And Yasu fits that kind of that thing. He's not very good in team fights because he has to dive right in and he's very, very squishy. So when someone's that squishy, it's very easy, easy to counter them when they dive in because he jumps in with his ultimate. If he doesn't eliminate someone straight away, then he's pretty much just screwed. Now you see at the moment, I'm still ahead of CS uh, on Yasu. I'm just trying to auto attack to get rid of his shield. So even though he's doing pretty well, I, my focus now has turned from harassing him to just farming. And that's kind of literally just an adaptation to how the lane was going. I recognize that he's actually really strong in lane and he can dodge my harass, which means I'm literally wasting my mana if I do choose to harass him. So I'm not going to bother doing that. The other thing to note as well is that my Q, because I'm maxing it first, is 60 mana, but it does more damage than my W or anything else. So if I'm going to push the wave and an ability, I'm going to push it with my Q. This means that it's just the most like mana efficient spell to be using because... I use the same amount of mana as my W, but my W does less damage, which means I'm not pushing as hard as I actually would be. I don't really have the mana for this gank, but I'm going to let him come in and see if <clears throat> is he actually going to do this. So I got a stun on him, which is good. And I might be able to get the kill on him. There we go. So I have my barrier, which means like he was positioning himself to die me, and I knew he was going to do it, because there's no reason you walk up to here when you're actually... like. I know. There's no reason you would walk up to me that far under turret if you were not going to try and dive me, but having barrier means that he has no kill potential, and this was something I already knew. If he bandaged, I'm going to flash. <clears throat> so that was unfortunate. I didn't expect him to come from here. I expected him to come from here, and I had uh, minions protecting, protecting me there. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I do, I'm actually pretty ill at the moment, which is why I haven't been making as many videos as I want to. Um, and that's why I had to obviously just mute my mic right there <laughs> because I had to cough. So I apologize if I do have to mute my mic and I go quiet. Um, I just want to get some videos out for you guys. And yeah, I, I have a little bit of a cough at the moment. So, but that's fine. So I'm going to see a kill up now. We're even on a CS, which is pretty good. Um, Cinder is really good at blowing people up. And obviously, like, when you, your ultimate does more damage for how many balls on the map. So you see that my ult has three right now because there are three maps. You see now I put that one down and that's four. You can also get a final one so you can get another uh, Q on the map by the time the first one times out. Which means that you can have five balls, if not more, on the map at one time. So five is like the perfect target. Uh, four is pretty good for ult but you shouldn't ever ult at three. Obviously, as a subscriber, I actually pointed out to me in my one of my last videos in the comments, if you're a male uh, champion playing against Syndra, she automatically does two more damage to you because obviously you got a pair of balls. I, I found that hilarious. It was really good. But I'm just trying to harass him as much as possible. And I'm actually going to try and go for a kill on him at some point because the only problem is I, I'm pretty sure he uses barrier. So it's on the same cooldown as mine. But I don't have my flash. So if he goes really aggressive on me... There isn't much I can do. Like he, he crowd controls me with a knock up, which I have to be careful. This is why I'm backing off right now because I don't want to get hit by that. So he will crowd control me with that. He'll then crowd control me with his ultimate, which means that it just like the combination of the two. I don't have any time to stun him or anything. Syndra is normally good against melee or anyone because she can just eat them backwards. But I can't eat him backwards if he's if I'm knocked up and disabled. This shield also is really frustrating uh, to play against because he just kind of gets it up all the time. But I'm going to try and get as much damage as I can onto him. I don't have a blue buff yet at all, which is the other thing. Wow, that did not... Okay, so my E knocked him back, but that was really strange. My E knocked him back, but he didn't actually get a stun on him, unfortunately. So, so that, that's not that's not great, but uh, could be worse, I guess. I'm just going to try and poke him as much as possible because... I'm pretty sure I can kill him at some point, and then I really just want to roam. So if I can't kill him, I'm going to roam, because I want to start having an impact on the rest of the map now. Uh, thankfully, bot lane seems to be doing pretty well. Bot lane is actually a pretty strong lane in Annie and uh, Siva anyway. So I don't think I need to roam bot lane necessarily, but if I can roam bot and I can pick up a kill, I will do. Now I'll just talk about build very quickly. If you're not sure about the builds, <clears throat> I do mention it briefly in my top 5 video. You'll notice that Syndra is on uh, number 3, I think, on my top 5 mid laners right now because she is so strong. And 
one build is for kind of team fighting and that's this build right now. The Athenes is really good for mana because as you can see I'm constantly spamming spells on Syndra and the cooldown reduction is really good for using your Q in a team fight so it just means you do extra damage when you're actually in a team fight. This is the build I'm going to go for so I'm going to go for Athenes. I'm then going to go for something like a death cap into a void stuff and just go for huge uh, damage. So not only will I be able to spam my Qs a lot, but I'll be able, they'll be doing a huge amount of AoE damage as well. And also with a death cap afterwards, my ultimate's going to be doing a ton of damage. Oh crap, that might be me dead. <clears throat> okay, no, he just used it for poke. Okay, what the fuck is this champion? Why do you just ult for like, for lols? I don't understand. <clears throat> so he's pretty dead because he uh, doesn't have flash or anything. I don't have mana to kill him. Thankfully, he got him. Uh, he's got a red buff on me, though, and I've got no mana, so... <clears throat> I couldn't do anything there. He should have recognized that I have no mana. <clears throat> so, I can't do anything. Like, if I try and fight a Mumu, I'd just be auto-attacking, and that's not really going to do any good. So... <clears throat> Yeah, see, uh, the thing is, with a chalice, you restore more mana the, the less you have. So, obviously, I had enough for a key, but then after that key, I was going to have no mana again. <clears throat> I'm just going to, I'm not going to respond to him again, because he's probably just going to get a bit angry, so I'm just going to leave him. Uh, top seems to be not going too well at the moment, and one of the reasons is probably because Darius is actually building damage, and Darius doesn't really need to build damage, because Darius does a huge amount of damage with his ultimate. That's also something that um, I kind of wanted to mention as well because Mundo has taken uh, he's taken exhaust this game. Now that's not the smartest thing ever to do on Mundo because against a Darius, like Darius does true damage, okay, and things like exhaust don't. Uh, <clears throat> Things like exhaust don't affect um, true damage, so the, his ultimate isn't going to be doing any less just because of because of that. So it doesn't really make any sense. Now, I obviously a movie came in. Now I flashed after the banished toss because I actually thought I could kill him. His health was pretty low. I didn't even have to use my ultimate in the end, but his health was pretty low, and so I was pretty sure I was able to kill him, which is why I just flashed afterwards. I wanted him into tire range to take a few tower shots and then I would flash away from the damage so I didn't obviously die but he's obviously under turret and he's taking a lot of damage the whole time. So I'm just gonna push right now and uh, Yasu's getting close to where I can ult him and actually kill him. Unfortunately I don't have like an ignite or anything so it's gonna make it a little bit difficult and that dodging around is getting really, really annoying. Holy crap. Combined with the shield and the dodging, it means I have to do, like, I have to hit a lot of spells in quick succession to actually take him down to a health where I can kill him. You can see he's got his uh, charge thing. It just reminds me of something like uh, Dragon Ball Z. Oh, crap, he's going to ult. He's using this for harass. I don't know if that's the smartest thing in the world. I don't really, I haven't really played a ton of Yasu, so I don't know what the best thing to be doing is. But I'm pretty sure using that just as a harass tool is not the uh, the best thing. So he's not really doing anything to me, to be honest. But he's definitely looking to kill me. Now you can see from just from his positioning. So he's um, he's standing off to the sides now. Now when you stand off to the side on a laner, it means that you're trying to get a kill. He's positioning himself pretty far like in front of the minion wave and the only reason you would do that is if you were hunting for a kill oh that was unfortunate Darius didn't pick up the kill but the game's going pretty well so far I'm 2-0-1 there's a ward in there that's 2 minutes and that was at 25 so that's 16-25 <sighs> um, I really could use a blue buff right now because if the problem with playing against this guy right now is that if I don't hit all my spells I am uh, it's like I need to hit a lot of spells in quick succession <clears throat> Wow he actually just did that okay that was interesting mm. 
Not sure about this, maybe. Mean, <laughs> so the reason I didn't show and I said uh, just stood in this bush because I wanted to see what Moon was gonna do. Like he was either gonna banish us over, or he was gonna come and try and hunt me down. Now what I actually thought he was gonna do was hunt me down because he. You notice how I moved over here straight away, and as soon as I did, he kind of came this way, and then he came round. So I assumed that he had vision on me, either with a ward around here, which is not too uncommon now because ward uh, brushes are so kind of small that. It's not uncommon for people to just ward in these spaces to actually get as much vision as possible. I'm going to try and run bot lane because Tarek is right there. And I think we can actually kill this guy. So I'm going to roam down. I'm going to try and get some... Unfortunately, he just baited the crap out of that guy. Which is a bit unfair, but... That's fine. That worked out, I guess. Uh, I could stay because I have my ultimate in like two... Three seconds. So I could... I can like one shot this AD right now, especially with Sivir if I get a stun. Okay, Yasu's here, so this is a little bit dangerous now because we can't actually see what's happening as well. Oh fuck yeah, this is kind of what I expected. <sighs> yeah, this is kind of what I expected. I could have barriered, but the Amumu was going to be right there. I didn't think Amumu was going to be there, which is why I want. Basically, I just walked here. I was going to ward here, and I was going to run away. Unfortunately, though, he was right, like sitting right there. I decided to dump my load on um, onto Ezreal just in case because this kind of situation, the Ezreal is so low he can't actually do anything and that's pretty much just because of my ultimate. Now obviously I'm not saying that I intentionally did it because I knew they were going to chase or anything but just on the off chance that they actually continued to fight, it was like Ezreal, it kind of took Ezreal out of the fight which is why I did it. I thought I maybe could have got enough damage for Sivir to pick up the kill at the time as well and when you combine the two it's just like trying to put him as low as possible to make him useless. We can actually go do a dragon play right now. This is really risky because even though everyone's dead, uh, Olaf, okay, Olaf is a monster right now. Like Olaf's a higher level than Darius. Holy crap. This is another reason why Olaf is just so, so strong. But I've farmed pretty well this game. Uh, that was the first roam. Uh, thank you, phone, for making an appearance in my video. Uh, <laughs> that, that was the first kind of roam I've done, and thankfully it was successful. The reason I went right at that time, I do want to talk about something called opportunity cost. So I do study economics at degree level and some of the stuff actually transfers into league. Now it sounds a little bit weird how does economics apply to league, but there are different theories. So one of them is opportunity cost. And this is something that in a simple form, basically what you're missing out by doing something. So if I do the A option, so if I roam, what do I miss out on? Well, the answer in this case is you miss out on farm, you miss out on experience if your lane opponent pushes. I might have to flash. I'm going to flash just because I don't want you to suddenly kill me. I'm just going to keep harassing the whole time because someone's here. I don't know who it is. It's Olaf. And I think we may be able to pick up a kill if I maybe land a max range. Nope. Not quite far enough. So I had to flash. That was unfortunate. I thought I could push uh, a Mumi back before he did any damage to me but he got the banished toss and stunned me and then the follow up from Tarek and there's then afraid of basically just being chain CC to death with uh, the knock up from Yasu. Yasu actually does a surprising amount of damage for those of you who haven't really played against him he actually does wreck face the problem with him right now is just he's very vulnerable to CC so if you stun him in a team fight you're pretty much screwed so anyway as opportunity cost I was saying it's basically the cost of doing something instead of something else. So if I roam, it means I'm not farming. It means I can't pressure Yasu and shut him down. Now, in that situation, I just pushed and roamed. And the reason I chose to roam was because, uh, because I saw Tarek, uh, Tarek actually warding. That sounds kind of strange. Why would I move when I see him warding? The reason is because I saw him over here. He's, he's then warded here. He's put himself out of position. Okay, I'm going to try and come down here and see if I can actually help laners. That was a really good spell shield from Siva, really good. Uh, unfortunately, this is just suit. Oh, Olaf's coming, so I think we can actually turn this. We can turn this. Definitely. I've got a stun onto Ezreal, so I'm going to focus him. I'm gonna, now going to focus onto Yasu. I'm going to jump around this way, and I'm going to ward over so I can see. Uh, I'm just going <clears> to... <throat> okay, I think Mumu is still around. I'm going to leave him as well. That was unfortunate. I'm not sure if I'm going to get this. Okay, I think I might get him now. We'll see. Yeah, 
Yeah. So I just wanted to position myself in, uh, or try and get as much damage as possible and kill the person who I didn't think my team was going to get. So you see, I left Yusu. The reason I left Yusu was because he was definitely dead. Then Tarek walked into them after they'd already killed Yusu, which means that he's already definitely dead. <clears throat> wow, that stun isn't quite there. Which means that he's definitely dead. So then I left him and tried to chase onto Amumu. So I'm just trying to get my team as many kills as possible, even though... Like, those kills are guaranteed. I could have probably taken one. I probably could have gotten a little bit more fed myself. But it's better for my team overall if I just try and get as many kills as possible for other people. Just the same. I'm going to roam down because they look like they're in trouble. I'm going to pop a health potion just in case they turn onto me. I'm going to try and stun the Ezreal, which I've got him. But I don't have my ult, so I'm not going to go too ham here. Because even though he doesn't have his ult, and the reason I know that is because he just fired at me. Uh, he can probably still kill me if he really wanted to, so I'm not gonna. I'm just not gonna risk it. Now I have my ultimate though. Oh shit, that's not good. I'm just gonna stun him and try and get away. I might be dead though because this guy. I'm just gonna use my W for the slow. I have my have my W again for slow in a second, but I have um this to stun. Oh please. I'm going to try and ult and see if I can get any damage. Ugh, that Ezreal ult killed me pretty much. I think that extra damage meant that they, they could dive me with the barrier. Good ult for him, good ult. There was nothing more I could really uh, do, unfortunately. I should have got the extra stun on them, but I just wanted to stun as far away as possible. And when that Amumu caught me, there was just game over for me, unfortunately. But they chased for a long time, so I think we may get something out of this. We'll see. Oh, uh, that's really unfortunate not to get the Amumu. This Sivir is pretty screwed now, I think, though. Because if he gets his knock up, they're going to definitely pick him up. Darius has picked up that kill, and maybe even picked up that. What the hell was that shield? Christ, I have no idea what that is. That target on a shield, I guess. That's pretty, pretty cool. I've never seen it red before, so I'm guessing that's when it's on the enemy team. It's red. This is why Mindo's broken. Look what the hell he's doing. He's just tanking this turret, and he's actually going to, like... He's not even going to die. I stunned him under freaking turret and he's not going to die. Are you kidding me? <clears throat> that is just, This is why Window is a joke at the moment. Yasu can also kill me right now, so... Yeah. <clears throat> wow, my team is so angry. Holy crap, what is their problem? Uh, this game's going pretty well. I don't understand why all of a sudden like everyone's raging. This is just, just the game. Chill. Chill your beans. Okay, I'm dead. 100%. Oh, no, okay. God damn it. This Ezreal is really starting to piss me off. He's caught me with his ult quite a few times now. I'm going to go back and get my hat. <clears throat> uh, let's see if we can calm them down. But I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's not going to have any impact at all. So, okay. So, let's just talk about mid-game. What you should actually be trying to do. Because I farmed pretty shitty actually after I started roaming I've hardly picked up any farm this is kind of not what you should do right now uh, Sivir's kind of running off and we should just be trying to push towers so we've got the three outer towers that's really good we've got an inner tower as well and now dragon spawning so if we could actually okay I need said so we just need to group just group and we'll be fine so we just need to group right now and we'll be honestly we'll, we will be fine um, we're actually a lot stronger than them but it's not going to make any difference if... Okay, Darius is not here. <clears throat> I can I can stun here and I can just... Uh, wow, that was really close. Holy crap. I'm not sure about that from Tarek. I think we can turn this now. He's got his ultimate available, but I, there's not, no follow-up for me, so I'm not actually that afraid of it. I don't really want to ult him. I want to ult Yasu or... Uh, or Ezreal even. I'm trying to just get away from Mundo. And, uh, wow, he flashed it. Okay, that was well played by him. But I think he might still be dead. I'm not sure. Please, just die, Ezreal. Fuck me, skill shot's too hard. Maybe not. <clears throat> Maybe not. So I'm ducking out vision around here. I'm just going to try and recall because Mundo is down here. Or, or he's in our base. What the fuck is Mendo doing? 
This guy is so broken. Okay, skill shots are way too hard for me, apparently. That was kind of embarrassing, but I still picked up the kill. So it's all good. It's all good. I got a quadra, and yeah, I got a quadra, okay? It was fine. It was fine. So apparently Mundo can eventually actually die, which is uh, news to me. I did not know he could die, but apparently he can. Died three times. That's got to be a world record for the most deaths run Mundo has ever got in a game. Uh, I'm just going to go back to farming now. You can see as well with this build, uh, I actually did a lot of team fight damage. And my what I'm trying to do in every team fight, as you can see there, was just stay at the back, throw my Qs off as much as possible, and then assassinate a target that I needed to. Now, when you're actually using your ult, you need to constantly think, what is the effect if I do ult? What is the effect if I don't ult? So, right there, um, I could have ulted Amumu, and I could have taken him out of the fight immediately. Now, Amumu is kind of a one-trick pony. And what I mean by that is that he only has his ultimate. So, once you've, once he's used his ultimate, he's not actually that useful. Like, Amumu, you don't play Amumu just to, like for the AoE damage or anything like that. You play him for his ultimate. He'd already used that. There wasn't any follow-up, so I didn't even bother to flash away, and I was happy to take that. But the... And so, uh, so pretty much, he's not really a target for me. I'm throwing my Q because he's the closest target, and I just want to put some damage onto him and get... And, and eventually kill him. But my targets were really Yasu and Ezreal. Those were the two carries in the fight. Those were the two that I needed to make sure I killed. And so I saved my ultimate for them. If I needed to blow someone up like straight away, then I could have just uh, immediately ulted one of them, put myself in, in quite a lot of danger for it. But at least we would have got someone. This is pretty bad actually because he's going to ult, I think. Well, I think we can fight this. Okay, maybe not. Not anymore. I'm not gonna. I, I put myself in a lot of danger there. I went way too far forward because I thought we were gonna fight. Thankfully, he didn't ult or anything, and the rest of the team didn't follow up. But as I was saying, okay, that's not good though. It's gonna. Ult. I'm just trying to line the stun up onto Ezreal, and I actually managed to hit it thankfully as well. Because Ezreal was the follow up there. Like, Ezreal was the damage, and even though the stun hit Amumu, I was aiming for Ez. So the Amumu stun was kind of a. Um, Byproduct, I guess, of that. I'm gonna put a ball here just so that I can stun if I need to. But this Tarek is freaking quick. Uh, now this ward here, I put here because it sees this entrance, this entrance, and above and below. So what that means is uh, I can see if they run into their jungle, and I can see if they're coming from the base. I don't really want to lose my blue for no reason because the whole team isn't here. It's only a couple of people. Okay, we lost the blue. That's not good. But we can maybe pick up some kills here. I'm going to put my stun onto as many people as possible. That didn't hit. Oh, they did hit Ezreal. Wow, that's good for me. I'm going to ult Mo uh, Mundo because I think he actually needs to die. He's actually pretty strong right now. <clears throat> I don't know if we can do this because we don't really have any tanks. Uh, we have Tibbers maybe. Syndra's good. Sustained damage, don't get me wrong, but Olaf is really low. I guess he does have his mastery and whatever, but we've got no wards. And Amumu is up as well, so... This is risky. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to try and keep him away, but I can't. Thank God we got that. I'm going to stun. There we go. Got the stun. He's pretty much dead. There we go. So I'm just constantly trying to stun the, the carries. Every time someone pops into the fight... I'm trying to stun the priority targets. In the team fight, I wanted to stun the front line because it meant they couldn't retreat. Because that was a good fight for us because the movie wasn't there, and I knew that. It wasn't so much as a uh, thing of we need to kill everyone really quickly. It was more of a thing of we just need to catch them, make sure they don't get away. So when they don't, I don't want them to get away, I'm literally just using my E to make sure that they don't get away. When I want them, when it's more important for them to, for me to get a carry, I'll be making sure my stun goes onto the carry and ignores the front line. This is the biggest part about playing Syndra in a team fight. It's just, it's pretty much game knowledge. This is why she has such a high skill cap. Mechanically, it's pretty difficult to play her anyway, because one, she's very immobile, and immobile champions are more difficult to play, because if you make a mistake positionally, like if I position myself badly, I will get punished really hard for that. And so when it's more punishing like that, it's, I think champions are harder to play. He's just going to ult, but I might be able to kill him. I don't know. I don't have... Yeah. I do have enough damage, thankfully. Um, I'm, I make, I did make sure until I had uh, five balls there down, because if I had ulted any earlier without the five balls, I definitely would not have killed him. I think it was the last ball that actually killed him. 
Uh, anyway, so she's, whenever someone is immobile and it's hard to position them, or you get punished very hard if you position wrong, then you have to obviously position right 100% of the time, which is difficult to do anyway. Secondly, all of her kit are skill shots, which is pretty much if you can't do skill shots, you can't play her, and so that makes her difficult. Then you've got the fact that her ultimate is about judgment, so or her whole kit really is about judgment. Her E is about is quite a long cooldown in a team fight. You need to decide. Oh wow, Sib is actually pushing mid. Okay, that's my fault. I should have been mid lane. I'm too busy talking to you guys. <laughs> so you have to decide who you're going to stun because on a nine second cooldown, t you know, late game, like late game cooldowns are actually pretty tough. Like uh, a nine second cooldown late game is pretty long, and if you make the wrong decision to stun, then you're going to get punished for that. Whoa, holy shit, was, what the hell just happened? I just got wrecked. I I uh, did not expect to just suddenly die. Jeez. Okay. Well, that, that is the uh, the reason. <clears throat> I just wanted to do that, obviously, to show you guys why I'm building you a Zonyas right now. <laughs> because being so immobile, if I get knocked up, I need to Zonyas the follow-up damage. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so that was just... That, that happened. Um... But anyway, the other reason is because you have to choose who you're going to ult, who you're going to E. Both their long cooldowns are very important in a team fight. If you ultimate the wrong target, then you will lose the fight probably because Syndra relies on her ult for damage so much. If you E the wrong target, you can also cost your team the fight. So it's she's pretty tough to play, uh, but I think she can do a lot of damage. Like that fight that I got a quadra kill put me into this game in a big way. Like I got really far ahead. In that fight and the main reason well one of the reasons why was because I only had two items so I shouldn't have really have done that much damage but I hit all of my Q's I hit my W's I hit my stun onto Ezreal and Yusu which kept them at bay during the initial part of the fight and obviously my ultimate wrecks Yusu as well through the barrier and through the Tarek shield as well so like when a champion can do that much damage I think it's really really I don't know, I think she's really strong. Now, I, I used my E, I was going to use my E to stun, but he put the, he put the wall down, which made, means it was difficult for me to, to actually do that. Uh, there's nothing we can really do. There's nothing we can get top lane. If he wants to just tank that, it's really risky. Uh, um, the reason it's so risky is because the whole team is up right now. I'm just going to stun. I don't really want to fight this, regardless, because it's a full view. Like, Annie's not even here. I'm going to sit here, though, because I think we can probably turn on this guy. I'm going to ult right now, because he's already low. I don't think he has his ult, either. I'm going to flash out, because I think he has his ultimate. Okay, so I don't think he actually has his ult, then. Just based on that, like, that reaction from him. Okay, no, he does. He does have his ult. Okay, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know if he has his ult or not. I'm same playing so pussy. I have to play as if he has his ult. I have to play like that because if I don't play... There we go. He has his ult. If I don't play as if he has his ultimate available, then I'll kill myself. Because if I am if I go right next to him to do maximum damage, like, all my spells are reasonably short range. Like, if I have a look at myself right now, that's, like... If I'm max range, obviously, I'm fine. If I'm in a range, though or range for my E, he can definitely hit me with his with his ultimate. So the reason I was playing so pussy right there is because if I don't play so f afraid of him, then if he actually does have his ultimate and he ultimates me, I will become the target of everyone's focus because I'm so such high, prior high priority. And also because, as I was saying before, Syndra is so immobile that she's so easy to focus down with hard CC. So if I was playing as if... She, he didn't have his ultimate, and he actually did, then I would have been pretty close to him doing maximum damage. I could have positioned a, a lot better and avoided my... I wouldn't have been around here, so I wouldn't have been taking a ton of damage. But I, if he did ult me, then suddenly everyone would have turned and, and killed me. So that's why I had to play like that. It wasn't ideal. It was kind of frustrating, but unfortunately there's nothing else. No other way I could have really played that, I don't think. So I'm going to buy a Leandries right now because I want to deal with Mundo. Um... Mundo's really high health. Like, Syndra does well with penetration anyway, because Syndra obviously has pretty high base damages. Uh, you can see her scaling is pretty much one of her big strengths, because 383 out of 639 is actually a pretty good AP ratio for her Q. One of the reasons why her Q does so much damage, like, in a persistent fight. Um, 
But I want some penetration, which is good anyway. But the main reason is literally just because Mundo is a beast. He has tons of health. And every time I poke him with my Q, I want to be able to do a ton of damage. And I want to be able to chunk him afterwards. So this Mundo is getting really big. Um, Mundo is one of the best, if not the best, top laner right now. Especially for solo Q because it's so hard to deal with him. Like, you can see that even though we're playing a pretty good game as a team, we're struggling because uh, Mundo is just so, so strong. And so right now we should be grouping and taking this because this is open. Uh, we're stronger as five, which means that like, there's no reason to allow it to be to be up. Uh, Mundo was going there, so I'm going to run away. I just warded that because I didn't know where everyone was. I know someone was around the top of the map. That was actually Yasu was at the top. He's now mid lane, but I didn't know that he just he wasn't running down here because we had no wards. And um, we really need Darius right now. Oh my god, we need to just group because this is getting really bad. That might be Baron, I'm not sure. The thing is right now that Darius is pushing their base, so they might actually have to recall and defend that. Which is going to be good for us. I'm trying not to get hit with a cleaver because I don't know who else is here. <clears throat> um, I'm trying. I'm going to try and get to this guy and help him because I know Mundo is going to be here. But okay, I don't think I can help him too much. <clears throat> I can stun him, but I think I'm pretty. If I get anywhere closer to him, I'm pretty much going to die because I'm even old and I can't afford that to happen. <clears throat> Now this was a dumb play by them, because basically, oh we got the Baron, that's good, that's good. But um, it wasn't a good play in theory, because basically, like, we could have saved Darius there easily. I'm going to die now, trying to help. I'm just going to ult onto Tarot to get a kill. I'm dead, I'm 100% dead right now, but um, I just wanted to ult and get a kill at least. Now that reason I was a dumb player is because it was a risk we didn't need to take. Like we could have just saved Darius, we could have turned, we could have killed them, we could have picked up an inhibitor, but instead they did Baron. I got caught. I should have just run straight down. I wanted to try and help. Um, I wanted to try and help whoever was dying, Olaf, but that backfired. So that was my mistake. I made a misplay there. Um, I could have Zonyz as well, but really there's just not much point. I didn't think I was going to gain anything from Zonyzing because. Mundo was going to kill me anyway, and I, it's not like I needed a cooldown to wait for. Next fight, I will have my flash, though, which means that I, that's not going to happen to me again, because I can just flash away. So, next fight, I'm pretty much set now. I'm almost full build. I have my magic penetration. I'll be able to wreck anyone if we group this game. It's pretty much over. So, just to kind of summarize then, while I guess I'm dead and not doing anything, how you kind of win these games... The biggest thing you can do as a mid laner is try and affect other lanes. You see, I, can, I was roaming mid lane. I was pushing Yasu and keeping up in farm. I managed to pick up a kill on a Mumu, but because Yasu was kind of struggling against me, I also drew mid, uh, pressure from the jungler. That's another thing that a lot of people don't actually think about, but is actually really good. The pressure you draw from the jungler is something underrated, because if he's ganking me, it means he can't gank someone else. Now, that is something that a lot of people don't like. People don't like being camped. They don't like having... Because it makes them look bad. That's that's pretty much it. I'm not going to lie. That's pretty much the reason people don't like getting camped. Is because it makes you look bad. And you feel like you're having a rough game. Even though... Turn on to the Mundo. Turn to Mundo. It makes you feel like you're having a bad game. Even though you're not. And the re in reality though. It's actually a good thing. If someone camps you. It means they can't camp your players. And if you're better than your teammates and you can still farm, you can still handle it, then that should be a blessing for you because if your teammates get camped, they're probably going to feed and no one wants their teammates to feed. So if someone camps you, that's kind of a good thing. This uh, game is dragging on way too uh, too long. We should just be finishing it, but we can't at the moment because uh, people are dead. Just going to say nicely, can we group an end? Because that would be fantastic. I The reason I'm farming jungle right now uh, is because I need 100 gold for my Leandries. I wonder if I was going to let me get anything. Uh, I'm going to go to Wolves. They're probably going to be up soon. 
Um, my only Andrews is after it means I'm going to be at full build, so I'll do a ton of damage. I'll even be able to kill Mundo pretty easily as well, because look at his items. Health, health, health. That's a little bit of health. Spirit Visage is a little bit of health as well, so every item he's actually bought gives him health. Uh, my blue buff's up as well, but I, I actually really want... Okay, so I don't have the Greed Mastery. This is another thing people don't really think about. I don't actually have the Greed uh, Mastery, the thing where it makes your buffs last longer. And um, so I don't want to take it until... I don't want to take it until I get into a team fight. I don't want to take it until I actually we're looking to fight, because... By the time we, if I like took it then, I recall, I buy, I then run to base, I'll have less time of blue. And that's just not, there's no reason taking it, it's not in any danger or anything. So I'm basically just losing portion of like 25% of my blue for no reason. And it might mean that it times out halfway through a fight. Annie needs to come and help right now because we need to group. Well, we have to wait for Annie. We can't do this right now because we will die. I'm going to try and stun, um, just to push them off the turret. The thing is though, if you chase Mundo, look, he's just cleavering, and how much damage that does, holy crap. So, it's so risky. I'm going to try and get a stun, and maybe we can follow up, because that was a three-man stun. And we've got Sivir ult now as well. Yasu has the GA, so I'm not going to focus him. I'm going to try and defend Sivir as much as possible, which means I'm going to stun here. I shred tanks as well, so... If I can just protect Sivir, we'll win the fight. I'm going to ult onto Yasu now because he's jumped in. <sighs> and there we go. So, just because I'm a high damage mid laner, just because I'm really good at killing the enemy carry, doesn't mean that's that has to be my job. My job is to do whatever is best for my team. And keeping Sivir alive because no one else on my team was doing it, meant that we won that fight. If I left her alone with Mundo, we probably would have lost that fight. And so there was just like, I had to stay with her. I had to to protect her because if I didn't, we probably would have lost the fight anyway. And I saved my ult because I don't need it at the start of the fight. There's no point using it on a diver onto Sivir because, well, I can't use it on Mundo. It's kind of a waste. I just wait for your suit to not have his J and then it's going to instantly blow him up. 